Today's topic is verifying geometric properties. Today's goal is to use all the formulas we have learned to verify the properties of geometric figures. So, um, verifying geometric properties. To verify geometric properties, we use all the tools in our mathematical toolbox to answer questions like, show that the quadrilateral with these endpoints, and you will be given four endpoints for a quadrilateral, is a trapezoid. Uh, so you have to know what a trapezoid is, and the back of your textbook can give you definitions of things like trapezoids. Um, you could also be set, asked to verify that the point 0.35 is on the perpendicular bisector of a line segment. Or you may be asked to show that the diagonals of a square bisect each other. So you have to know what bisect means. You have to know what it means to be a square. You have to know all of that kind of stuff, and your textbook will help you with definitions and things like that so that you can refresh your memory. In order to do this, we need to know the definitions of things like trapezoid, perpendicular, bisector, to be able to apply formulas to answer the questions. Each question will need a plan of attack, and sometimes you have to work backwards in your thinking to know what to do. So let's take a look at what our mathematical toolbox is. This is what I mean by our mathematical toolkit. Uh, we have slope, and we know that slope can show that things are parallel or perpendicular because we know that parallel lines have the same slope and perpendicular lines are um, negative reciprocals. And we can also use slope to find the equations of lines. And of course, this is the slope formula right there. And you need to know how to use it. What can we do with the length of a line? Well, we can show kinds of triangles. We've already done that. It could be an equilateral triangle uh, with all sides of the same length. Uh, could show quadra the kinds of quadrilaterals, like uh, is it a square? A square has all four sides of the same length. Um, and we can use to find out any time we want to know whether two things are of the same length. And so we have the length of line formula is another one of things in our toolkit. Midpoint is used to find the middle of something. And since bisect means to cut in half, midpoint is used any time it talks about bisection. And of course, we have the midpoint formula right there. And lastly, we have equations. Uh, equations can be used to find slope. If I'm given the, an equation of a line, I can rearrange it and figure out what the slope is. Um, we can use it to find points, find out if points are on a line. If we sub it in and it works, then the points are on a line. And we have various um, forms for the equation of a line. The one that's going to be most useful to us is that one there because it helps us find the equation of a line in standard form. And of course, you need to know good old y equals mx plus b that gives you slope and y-intercept. So now let's take a look at a couple of questions that we could be asked. Example 1 says, find the perpendicular bisector of the line segment with endpoints 5, negative 4, and negative 7, 8. So we need to know what it means to be a perpendicular bisector. A perpendicular bisector is a line that cuts the center of a line segment, okay? So that the two halves of the line segment are of equal length, and since it's perpendicular, it's going to cut it at a 90 degree angle. So that's the perpendicular bisector. So I've just got this little diagram here. I'm going to put on, say this point is 0 0.5, negative 4, and this point over here is negative 7, 8. If we want to show that something is on the perpendicular bisector, or if we want to find the perpendicular bisector, which is just a line, we have to find slope and we have to find a point. So anytime we're asked to find the equation of a line, we need slope and a point. Now, since this line uh, passes through the center, of the line segment, we know that a point on it will be the midpoint of the line segment. And since it is perpendicular to the line segment, we know that the slope of this line we're looking for will be the negative reciprocal of our line segment. 
And so that's actually our plan of attack. We're going to find slope and a point. And I know how to find the point. It's, it's this one right in the middle of the line segment. And I know how to find the slope. It's going to be the negative reciprocal of our line segment. And then I need to sub slope and a point into my handy slope point formula. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to say finding slope. And I need the slope formula because I have two points, so I need m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So the slope of our line segment is negative 1. That means that the perpendicular slope will be positive 1. That's a nice slope to work with. Now we have to find a point. Find a point. And we know that the line we want passes through the middle of our line segment because it bisects it. It's called the perpendicular bisector. So since it passes through the midpoint, we're going to find the midpoint using x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. So after using the midpoint formula, I find that the line I'm looking for actually has a point of negative 1, 2. So now we say using um, negative 1, 2 and m equals positive 1, we're going to find the equation of this line. And we're going to use the y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So y minus y1, here's my y1 down here, y minus 2 equals m is 1 and x minus x1, well x1 is negative 1 so minus negative 1 is plus 1. And now there's no fractions to clear so I just need to get rid of the brackets and rearrange to standard form. and add 2 to both sides, so I get plus 3 on this side. So there is the perpendicular bisector of that line segment. Okay, now our next question says, determine which of the following are true for quadrilateral STUV with S12, T34, U67, and V43. Uh, so part A says it's a parallelogram. We're going to see if it's true. For it to be a parallelogram, you have to know what that means. So for part A, to be a parallelogram, opposite sides must be parallel. Parallel lines have the same slopes. So opposite sides must have the same slopes. Now we have to check that out. I'm going to draw a very rough sketch of this parallelogram just so that I can have a look and see what the opposite sides are. So S12 is probably about here. Uh, T36 will be up here somewhere. Uh, U67 will be over here somewhere, and V43 would be here somewhere. So here's 
a rough sketch of our parallelogram. And now we have to see that opposite sides are parallel. So we have to see if opposite sides have the same slope. So finding the slopes. And we'll start with this side and this side. Um, ST and UV. Finding slopes of ST and UV. So after doing our calculations, I can conclude that since they have the same slopes, they both have a slope of 2, uh, M of the side ST is equal to M of the side UV. So those two sides are parallel. But that could mean that it's just a rhombus, or sorry, a trapezoid. Trapezoid has one pair of parallel sides. A parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. So we have to double check the other two sides. So now we're going to have to find the slope of those two sides, TU and SV. So we'll go ahead and do that. So there we have it. The slopes of those two opposite sides are equal to. So we can say since... And here's the short form for since. It's an upside down there for. Since opposite sides have the same slope, this is a parallelogram. Okay, this question asked us, too, to show that the diagonals bisect each other. So the diagonals we want, I'll draw them on in green here. These are the diagonals. And what we want to show is that they bisect each other. So I want to show that this and this are the same and this and this are the same. Uh, but we don't want to do it with length of line formula because if this side... If those two things are the same, then this point here is the midpoint of TV. And if this side, if those two halves are the same, then that point will also be the midpoint of SU. So if we find the midpoint and find that they're the same, then that's enough to show that they bisect each other. So we need to say if they bisect each other, they will share a common midpoint. So we need to go ahead and find the two midpoints and see if they're the same thing. And through the magic of computers, ta-da! There they are. They are exactly the same midpoint. When you use the midpoint formula, you find that they are the same. So you say, since they share a common midpoint, they must bisect each other. Now, there are two more questions here, and I'm not going to go through them, but I'm going to go through the plan of attack. And yes, I want to see this point form plan of attack every time you do a question. For part C, it says the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. We have to see if that's true. And in order for them to be perpendicular, we know that their slopes are negative reciprocals. So your plan of attack would be if they are perpendicular. then their slopes will be negative reciprocals.
Now that may or may not be true. You have to go through and actually find the slopes of the diagonals, which were the same things that we did before, and see if they're perpendicular to each other. Um, if there are negative reciprocals, that implies that they're perpendicular. And part D says STUV is a rhombus. Well, you have to know what a rhombus is. A rhombus is a four-sided figure with all side lengths the same. And yes, that sounds like a square, but a square is a special case of a rhombus where all of the four corners are also 90 degrees. So if it is a rhombus, all side lengths will be equal. That's just the definition of a rhombus. A square is a special rhombus, but if it's a square, it will be a rhombus as well. So you need to go through and find the lengths of all four of those sides, ST, TU, UV, and VS, and see if they're all the same length. And if they are, then it's a rhombus. If they're not, it's not a rhombus, plain and simple. So uh, I'm going to leave those to you. You should try those ones out on your own, um, and we'll maybe talk about it in class. And that concludes today's lesson.